thing we wanted to say is we're, we're now starting to integrate a lot of this benchmark performance data into discovery mechanisms within LLMware. So the idea is, you know, as you're searching or discovering for a model or even building a programmatic workflow, wouldn't it be pretty cool if you could start drawing on some of this benchmark data and routing a request to a particular model based on some of its performance that it would achieve? So hi, everybody. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be looking at one of our favorite topics, which is trends in performance and accuracy of small language models. For those who've been following LMware for a while, I think you know our primary mission has been how do we use small language models for fact-based RAG in complex business domains like financial services, legal, business domains, and how do we build the most accurate small language models that we can. So today, we're going to be taking a look at where we are on that journey. And we're going to try to draw out some learning lessons and some trends that we see among some of the leading foundation models that we use as the base foundation for all of our fine-tuned models. So uh, what you see in front of me is a lot of data. What we're going to do over the course of the next by 10 minutes or so, we're going to really break this down. We're going to look at all of the data and we're starting to derive some of the key takeaways from it. Just to ground you to what we're looking at here. Far left, that is the LLMware model. That is our fine-tuned version. Every single one of these models is available in our Hugging Face repository. So you can go check out the model. You can use it in LLMware. So you can, you know, touch and experiment with the model yourself. The model then just to its left, that is the base model. That is the foundation model that we fine-tuned. And that's where we're going to look to draw some of these takeaways of, are these base foundation models improving? If so, how and where? which are some of the models that we're spending the most time with, which are some of the ones that are showing the most improvement in terms of underlying performance. You see the licensing parameters. Again, there's been a lot of good, I think, positive standardization in this over the course of the last year, moving in the direction of Apache 2 and MIT. The parameters then, uh, you see it in the next column. And then the column next to that is probably the single most important in this table. That is the score. That is the zero to 100 score of how many questions the model got accurate, uh, got correct on our test. The next five columns then are deep dives in five specialized areas, each of which had 20 separate questions. And we looked at each of those areas independently as specific and unique capabilities to evaluate. All right, now our methodology, we bring you know all of these models through our proprietary RAG fine tuning. We're gonna talk about the methodology for that on the next side. But we have probably over the last two years, we have at some point tried to fine tune just about every model, actually smaller even than 500, you know, half a billion. We've gone all down all the way to 100 million and we haven't had much success you know, below that. And then we've gone all the way way above 9 billion. But this is really the sweet spot for us is in that kind of 1 billion to 7 to 8 billion range is where we've spent most of our time. After we were fine tuning these models, the questions that we would always get from, you know, clients and partners was, all right, I don't know what the ML, MMLU is. I don't know what it in these other other, you know, academic benchmarks are, how accurate is this going to be? You know, if I go through all the hard work to assemble the right data pipeline, to build the right context passages, is the model going to be accurate enough in giving me the answers that I need that this project is even going to be worthwhile undertaking? And so we built what we would describe as a very common sense, pragmatic ag benchmark tester. It's 200 questions. Again, it's available in our Hugging Face repository. It's all out and open source. It's been used now thousands of times, which is really cool to see. First 100 questions we use to form the score between zero and 100. The second 100 questions, as I mentioned, consist of five sets of 20 questions in some of these specialized areas. Now, what we're going to try to do you know, as we look at this is by comparing scores between different versions of the fine-tuned models, very, very similar principles in the fine-tuning. There are some adjustments and improvements that we continue to make, our underlying data set and the training parameters, et cetera, et cetera. But for the most part, each of these models has a very, very similar fine-tuning. It's going to be expecting, and it's designed with a very simpler set of prompt wrappers and templates, and very similar kinds of expected outputs. So looking then and comparing the performance across these different models, we think gives a really unique insight into the different model bases. But as always, our rule is a really simple one and it's completely one-sided in favor of the model maker. We think we live in incredible times when all of these model makers are putting so much IP out into the public domain. So anything that we say that is good, the base model maker should take credit for it, take a bow. It is a credit to their model. Anything bad or anything that even sounds bad, they are totally welcome to blame us as the fine tuner for messing up the performance of their model. Now, our fine tuning regime is really grounded in the following principles. The first is that 
Every single prompt is a grounded source. So what we are assuming and what we're fine tuning the model to do is to assume and to read some context passage as an integrated part of that prompt rather than relying on general knowledge. We actually do not want our small specialized models in fact-based contexts to be relying on general knowledge. We want them to be largely like reading comprehension in the old SATs, read this passage, answer questions, or perform some analysis that's based on that passage. So it's all grounded source. It's all complex business domains. And what we're looking for are not nice chatty answers. We want very short answers that are just the facts, just answering the question that becomes easier to handle programmatically or to weave into some larger workflow. Not found is actually um, a, a defining characteristic of these models. If the information is not found in the grounded source, we actually provide a lot of negative samples in our fine tuning that the model will respond consistently and categorically not found. Because we believe I don't know is a lot better than overhelpfulness or certainly better than filling in the gaps and making things up or drawing on some form of general knowledge. Very short prompts for those who have used um, these models, what is very different perhaps than the direction of, let's say if you're using an open AI type of model, there's no real prompt instructions. For the most part, it's a simple packaging of that grounded source, read this, along with then some type of question or analysis, something that's being requested against that source material. So in most cases, you don't have to spend a lot of time really inventing you know, complex uh, prompt magic. It's intended for deterministic sampling. So these are fact-based use cases. We are not looking for creative generation. We're really looking at situations in which temperature is used at zero with sampling turned off. So the output from the model at every single token is usually what we're envisioning the output generation uh, parameters will be. Again, with an idea this is not for fun, it's not for chatbots, it's really intended to be for fact-based accuracy. And then finally, again, recognizing you know, some of the limitations of smaller models, we actually orient our fine-tuning at around a thousand token contexts, which is anywhere from you know, a paragraph or two to a couple of pages, but not really more than that. We don't believe that trying to exploit the maximal context window is usually the best strategy to get accuracy. And so we really look at context in this size range with, again, the expectation that in building that type of fact-based pipeline, you're going to have to be able to get to the right page or two of information to then be able to feed it into the model to get consistent, high, accurate results from it. Enough about the methodology. Let, let's come back and let's start to look at the results and draw some of the key takeaways. First big takeaway, small models are getting more accurate. So when you look across these 26 different models, you could actually look at their vintage, and in some cases, it's almost month by month by month, um, certainly throughout 2023. But in 2024, five of the six top performing models are in fact from 2024 vintage base models. The top two are 5.3 and 5.3.5 from Microsoft. The Estral 7B 0.3, which is their most recent version of their 7 billion parameter model. The Quen 2 7B and the E1.59B. So the one model of vintage 2023, which is our top performing model from 2023, was the E6B 1.0 base. I mean, as you can see that model, even just a tiny, tiny bit outperformed the 1.59B in our most recent testing. So certainly the, the models of 2024 vintage are more accurate. How much more? Well, if you actually average the accuracy score of the models, three billion parameters and up, the average was 96% of the 2023 vintage models, 98% in the 2024 vintage models. So you might say, okay, it's 2% more accurate, but another way to say the exact same thing is the number of inaccuracies reduces by 50%. Now, again, you could say 100 questions, is it enough of a statistical sample? There is gonna be some you know, margin of randomness in such a small sample size, but we do think that consistently across the board, we are seeing improvements in accuracy that are statistically meaningful. So in short, the models are getting a bit more accurate, you know, as you look at the progression into 2024. Now, some of the notable formers, as we've mentioned, Phi 3 model mini version, 3.8 billion parameter model, it has been consistently a top performer that we've seen in our fine tuning and in our testing. And it was just interesting when we, we just did this with the 3.5, very similar and consistent results. Those are the only two models that actually got a perfect um, accuracy score on uh, these 100 questions. Quen 2, we're new to Quen. So before Quen 2, 
we had really not spent much time with the Quen models. Quen 2 models are fantastic. They are definitely among the best models. They're obviously really popular. Lots of people are using them and downloading them. We actually saw with the 7B, the 1.5B, and the 0.5B, really, really excellent, excellent performance. They fine tune well, they quantize well, and their performance for their size is really, really strong. And then finally, Mistral and E always do really well. We thought the Mistral 0.3 was actually a notable improvement from the original Mistral, which was a pleasant surprise to us. Now, among this new generation, again, E, very, very strong, 1.0 to 1.5. The 5.3 to 5.3 to 5, we, we didn't see any real difference between the two. They both performed really well. The one thing we would call out here, and again, this is where we would take the responsibility, not certainly not saying anything about Llama, but we actually have had trouble fine-tuning and quantizing and getting good fact-based results from Llama 3.0 and Llama 3.1. Llama 2 had fantastic results with. We still use Llama 2 in a lot of areas. We think it's an excellent, excellent model. Um, one of our absolute favorites. We do like the simplicity and the smaller vocabulary. We like the simplicity of the prompt template and wrapper. So we're big, big fans of Llama 2. We use Tiny Llama, we use Sheared Llama. So certainly we're big fans of the Llama architecture, but we have just, just to report it out, we have really struggled to get the highest quality fact-based responses out of Llama 3 or Llama 3.1. So in all of our fine tuning, we then quantize the model, 4-bit quantization. So we believe that might be an area where we're losing a little bit of accuracy. But through that fine tuning and quantization process, we, we have seen regressions in accuracy with Llama 3. Okay, another notable takeaway is math, logic, and table reading. If you actually look at this column and you see where we were even you know, a little over a year ago, small models were absolutely dreadful at anything resembling like math, common sense logic. And these were basic common sense kinds of things, you know, increments decrements, if this is, you know, six days more than that, how much is it? We found ranking, sorting, basic kind of everyday math percentages. The models were, were just dreadful at it. That has changed a lot. And what really stood out to us in some of these recent rounds, we've made small changes in our fine tuning set around this, but not a lot. But the Quen model and the E model, really exceptional. And they both stood out, especially in table reading. Again, there's some cool use cases and videos that we're gonna be working on in that area. But these are some model makers that clearly have been focusing on infusing a lot more kind of math and logic and table reading instruction training samples into their base models. And again, it really shows in the quality and the accuracy that we were able to get as a result of that. Finally, the last key point that I wanted to make is the smallest model on this list in some ways is the most extraordinary. The Quen 0.5B, you can see the results there. It scored an 81% and it scored only around a 42% on maths. So you might say, okay, this is not like the greatest model. But actually, we think this is an extraordinary model. And in some ways, this actually breaks one of those sound barriers that we weren't sure could be done, and in many ways may yield more insights on what are the real nature of an LLM and what they're doing. We had, up until this Quen, Quen 2 0.5b, we had really struggled to get any model below 1 billion parameters to follow anything resembling simple instructions or question answering in any kind of consistent way. But if you start experimenting with this model, and we've started fine tuning it, we're actually gonna roll out a whole bunch of different fine tunes of it so people can experiment with it. We see a really, really, really small model here, smaller than we thought was possible, able to recognize a lot of good statistical patterns of language and to engage in an instruct-oriented way in a model package size that we just did not think was possible. So again, real kudos and a real shout out to the Quen 2.0.5 as a super, super interesting small model. And it builds on, again, just to take one extra second, you take a look at the Quen 2 1.5b. You know, this is a model that was performing as well as some of the 7 billion parameter-based models that we were fine-tuning were a year ago. So the Quen 1.5b, again, punches way above its weight in terms of the accuracy and the quality of it for such a small model. All right, now if you're interested in this stuff and you wanna really pour through it along with a lot more takeaways and a lot more analysis, we have posted two blogs on this subject. We've posted some links in some of our various repositories so you can find it that way. These are just some Medium blogs. We would encourage you to check them out, get more information on these benchmark studies. The last thing we wanted to say is we're, we're now starting to integrate a lot of this benchmark performance data into the discovery mechanisms within LLMware. So the idea is you know, as you're searching or discovering for a model or even building a programmatic workflow, when it 
be pretty cool if you could start drawing on some of this benchmark data and routing a request to a particular model based on some of its performance that it would achieve. So again, there's a couple of examples we've put out into our repository and a lot more functions, features that we're looking to build in to really help to exploit this as you start thinking about programmatic workflows using these models. All right, hope everybody has enjoyed the video today. Thanks everybody, take care and have a wonderful day.